So the Mokomoko Dryland Sanctuary, I think, is probably the smallest fence sanctuary in New Zealand. I'm quite proud of that. Uh, it's easier to manage. So the reason we need to exclude predators be is because the New Zealand's native fauna didn't evolve with predators. And we're talking about mammalian predators that have been introduced into New Zealand, like cats and ferrets and stoats and weasels and rats and hedgehogs. The list is long. So they're not cued into escaping from mammals. So uh, for a lot of species, we need to get mammals right down to very low levels or in some cases some species can't cope with any mammals at all in which case we need to eradicate them and in the case of around here build fences to exclude them. In terms of the fences we have to build well they're pretty big and they're complex and quite expensive. They're about six foot high, they've got a hood over them so that animals can't get up and over the, the fence uh, and they've got mesh across them and they keep out all of these mammals including mice uh, which is pretty amazing, juvenile mice so the mesh is often quite tight knit. Uh, the trouble is it, they generally do exclude everything uh, most, from, most of the time but mice do get in Mice are a problem because, uh, well, basically the more we look, the more we find that mice are actually affecting invertebrates um, in particular, because that's what they eat. They also have effects on regeneration of woodlands, um, actually, because they eat seedlings and seeds. Uh, but we've found them uh, attacking lizards in our Moka Moka century. So we're talking about skinks that are this big, Otago skinks in this case, we've found mice attacking them and making them bleed seen reductions in survival rates because of that. So when we try and eradicate mice when they get in we have to use poisons unfortunately because it's very difficult to control them just with traps. We're going to retrieve those poison baits in there, you know in the bait station. And the bait Take the baits out of those, put them in a bag. So these bags for the bait retrievers. So we're just bringing in the bait and thinking hoping that we've got them all. So building the fence is only part of it. Uh, you've got to then maintain that fence and make sure that it's all in order. What we do is we have a random subset of panels, you know, sections of the fence that, that each volunteer will check very thoroughly and they'll just check the rest uh, uh, more coarsely. So one of the problems we've got with putting up fences is uh, the joins. You know, you can't just put a nice continuous fence along. You've got to actually join them. Uh, they've got to be attached to the ground. There's a whole lot of sneaky little points where mice uh, can get through. And the other thing is um, you've got to allow water to flow through your sanctuary. Now we're pretty good here in the dry lands, although I can hear a creek going down in the gully right now because we've had some recent rain. In our sanctuary we only have two culverts to let water run under the fence. Uh, in a lot of other areas in New Zealand they've got many, many culverts. And culverts are a problem because you're trying to let water out of the sanctuary or into the sanctuary at the same time as stopping mice. So that's a real challenge and there's all sorts of different designs to do that but you have to be constantly vigilant to make sure that those culverts are, are mouse-proof and proof to other predators as well. So for many of our native fauna, getting rid of the predators is only half of the equation. The other half is habitat, the so-called bottom-up processes that are really important in terms of habitat providing shelter for the fauna and, and food sources. Um, and so our volunteers have done a lot of work in this sanctuary at removing the introduced weeds that compete with the native species as well as planting native species. 
I'm going up the valley to do pee. Yeah, don't tell anyone. But I'll be up there for quite a while. You might have to come and get me. <laughs> Right. Thanks, Phil. So we're trying to free up competition to allow the native shrubs like caprosmas and olerias and beckias uh, to flourish because those species, not only some of them provide fruit for lizards, but they also attract insects for lizards as well. So we've often got volunteers out here. We have field days on a regular basis. So it's very important to understand uh, what sort of benefit you're getting with all of the effort that people put into these projects. Um, and again, we have volunteers come out with cameras and we walk around the rocks and we, we sort of are trying to stalk the lizards and hunt them down and if we see one, we take a photo of it. And we've all got unique markings and so we can tell Joe apart from Alice, apart from Fred, uh, which is really cool. area that these sanctuaries, fence sanctuaries at least, the areas of them across New Zealand vary a lot. But you know in the in the scheme of things they're not that huge. So you might ask what's the contribution of these postage stamp areas to the bigger picture of conservation? And that's a really good question. Uh, one of them is it's a showcase for the public. To, it's easy for them to come here and see what a lizard community could look like in New Zealand. So we need those benchmarks for conservation, so for people to get enthused. The other thing is that they can be a repository for rare species to do well, uh, and then maybe be repatriated to other areas once you get predator control under control in, in larger landscapes. And the other thing is it provides a social glue for people to come together, come out here and enjoy the environment and, and have discussions about conservation and so forth. Cool. We've seen quite a lot of them and we've seen at least eight babies as well, so they're breeding. She's <laughs> <laughs> monitoring, she's measuring the abundance of those common get the shifts So where did you say you Maybe I'll look really inside that.